Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now, I was just starting to take apart this Winchester 1892 with set trigger problems. When it occurred to me, we've had several episodes where we showed the inner workings of the earlier single set triggers that were on the 73s, 76s, and the early 86s, but we've never showed the inner workings of these double set or what Winchester called a close coupled set trigger that were available on the later 86s and 1892s and 1894s. So before we start working this thing over, let's take a little closer look at what the parts look like and how this is all supposed to function um, and then see if we can't get this one working correctly. Okay, so here's our trigger assembly and it's much like the, the single set trigger assemblies in that we've got a stack of three springs back here and then we've got our sear up here, our front trigger here that acts as the catch hook does on a single set trigger assembly, and then the rear trigger over here which acts basically like the knockoff on the single set trigger assembly. Now it's really hard to see this in, inside that lower tang like this, so we've got all the parts separated out here out of another tang. And hopefully this is going to focus okay. Here's our springs. Now we've got three springs here, that, similar to what we have in the single set trigger assembly, but they're they're stacked completely differently, and that's really important in how they're stacked. Now this right spring over here is for the for the rear trigger or the uh, knockoff, and you can see that it curves upward and it's a thicker spring just like the knockoff springs are thicker on the uh, single set trigger assemblies and then it's the bottom spring now the next spring in the stack is actually this one over here on the left hand side and it's our sear spring and it is curved downward as is the the center spring which is on top which goes to the the catch hook or front trigger. So that sits in there just like that. In the middle, our sear spring, of course, sits in here just like this. And then our knockoff or rear trigger spring sits in here in this direction. Okay, we'll start off by getting these springs out of here and that's just a matter of getting this screw out of here. I'm doing this at a kind of an odd angle just so you can look in here and see what I'm doing. Maybe, if I'm not right in the way there. Okay, so there we go. We've got, got two of our springs out and of course we were missing the third already. And now it's a matter of, of getting this pin out, which just dropped right out. There's our pin. And now we've got our sear and our triggers should come right out and they do. They don't go in quite as easy. It takes a little bit to, to get them kind of all, all hooked up together and in line to get the pin back in. But here's, here's what we're talking about where this part is missing from this front trigger. See there's what it should look like. I'll see if I can get up a little closer there. So we'll, we'll use this, this one we've got here, and at some point in time when I get desperate, I'll see if I can't weld that up and, and rebuild that. Um, you know, it's kind of a vulnerable small little piece. I don't know if it'll, it'll work or not, but it might. And then let's see, we need to get another spring to go with these others and put this whole thing back together again. So first thing we'll do, is try to get the, this stuff lined up. But actually, the first thing we'll do is get a little oil on everything. Okay, so we'll start this pin here. And I, as I say, this is the trickiest part now is getting everything lined up. And, and you, you can maybe see in here that there are, are three pins in here that only go part way. That, that really have to do with, with the stroke of this uh, rear trigger here. So it kind of sits in, in those and then that other pin goes through it. And now we're going to try to get this 
second one in here this front trigger and it's kind of the tricky one there it goes and we'll have to get the hole lined up with it which is not that easy especially trying to do this at a strange angle there it went and then we've got to try to hold those in there and get this sear in there and lined up which we need about three more hands for um, let's see, push that down until we line things up there we go now if it doesn't fall out while we're goofing around here to get these springs in, we'll be in good shape. Okay, so we're halfway there. Now of course, this is our first spring, the one on the bottom goes in here. And then our next spring is over here, the sear spring over here. We've got to put that in and get it lined up, and then our top one it goes on that middle trigger, or that front trigger, I should say. It's the middle arm, but it's the top spring. And now we have to get our, our screw in there and hope we've got all three lined up and lined up with the hole, which is always a trick. Okay, have to be a little patient with me here as I get this lined up. There it's starting to bite. And this is kind of a long-winded screw. It takes some to compress those springs. Okay. Now, the acid test is, is this going to set? And it does. So, we've got a working set trigger. Fortunately, we had, had the parts here in inventory to put this one back together. Okay, now I'd love to be able to say that we can just put this rifle back together now that we've got a working set trigger. And we're good to go. But alas, we have another problem. Now, in order for a set trigger to work, we have to have what's known as a sear override, or what a lot of people call a fly. Because what happens is, is when we release that set trigger, it actually just knocks the sear out of the, the hammer notch here, the full cock notch. And it can rebound and catch in the half cock notch and keep the hammer from falling all the way. So we have to have that, that sear override in the hammer. And this one's missing one. And I don't have another one, so we're going to have to make one. Let's take a little closer look at what that sear overhead override looks like. Now, while all the parts in here that we just looked at and put back together are shared between the 1892 and 1894, this sear override and the hammers themselves are not. Now, over here on the left, we have a 94 hammer. And this is just a regular hammer. And you can see it's full width across here at the hammer notches. And here's another 94 hammer and you can see now this is a distinctive difference on set trigger hammers is that they're only halfway across. And as I set this back down now you can see this piece here that's our sear overrider or fly. Now on a 94 because it's configured differently the fly is a different shape, a different dimension than on a 92. Now here's a 92 and you can see the fly is a lot larger on a 92. So this is our, our hammer and the gun that we're working on and we can see that the fly is completely missing over here. So we're going to have to pull this zero override or fly out and use it as a template to build another um, fly to put in this hammer here and then we can put our rifle back together and see if it's going to work. Okay, so here's this 
fly or sear override that we need to get out of this hammer so we'll have a, a template to make another one for the other hammer. In fact, while I have it out, I'll make two or three of them just to have them on hand. But you can see it rotates on, on a pin right here. It's a very small pin, about 50 thousandths. And then the back end is held. There's a little groove in the hammer and the back end's held there. So while this fly kind of moves up and down, it still stays put. We've got to push that pin through just enough so that we can get that that fly out of there. So it's a small enough pin that a 16th punch is, is too big. So I tapered this 16th starter punch and we'll see if we can't get it through. A little more. More yet. It's a good tight pin. Not quite there yet. There we go. We've got our our fly now. Okay, so we got a hole drilled now in our, in our steel, and this is fairly hard steel, so it was a bit of a challenge. Had to have a little bit of patience drilling through it with these tiny little bits because they're awfully easy to break. So we'll line up those two holes there, and then we'll. We'll get our scribe here and we'll scribe a line around it. And we'll just take it over the belt grinder and, and grind right down until we just disappear those lines that we've scribed in. And of course we're just going to disappear them because those lines are just outside the dimensions of this part. And it's pretty critical to get the dimensions just right. Okay, all right, we've got a good line there. Hopefully you can see that all right. And then we'll just, we'll zip this off here and then just grind down, like I say, and disappear those lines and we'll have ourselves a, a sear override or a fly. Okay, so now we've ground these down right to where we disappeared those lines. We did a little bit of fit in here just to make sure they were just right and then we, we put them on a stone to, to take all those burrs off of the edges. Put a little cold blue on them. We can put our original back in, in this hammer, put one of them we just made in this hammer and then we've got a spare for the next time we need one. Alright, so it's one thing to test these things out on the bench in the shop, but we got to test them out in a real world environment before they go back to their home. So we'll see if we can't kill a jug or two with it before it goes out of here. Okay, remember we set that trigger from the left side. Oh, that did pretty good for 2520. Feeds good. Oh, right over the top. Oh, look at that. All right, the first two were a success. Let's see if we can hit that one way up on the hill there. We'll set this trigger. Oh, <laughs> I think this one's ready to go home. What do you think? Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you learned a little something. Until next time, happy trails from the Cinnabar.